Weather and life both change quickly. Do you have a farm estate plan? You need to learn the best option to help your family avoid or minimize federal estate taxes and other costs. I'm Brad Swenson, President of Swenson Investments and Commodities. We work confidentially with farmers, ranchers, and advisors to help develop the best farm estate plan. Brian, I got a new field just a couple of years ago. I've raised one crop off it. And you know, people ask me, what's the biggest problem with this field? And it has no fertility. It has no organic <laughs> matter. And I'm going to tell you, those two aren't my biggest problems. My biggest problem is getting the soil life going in that soil. My soil just isn't alive enough. So by soil life here, I mean certainly there are plant roots that you've got to consider. But we're talking about things like worms, beneficial bacteria, beneficial fungi. There's a lot more to soil than just dirt. But for us as farmers for many years, we just thought, oh yeah, it's just dirt, you know, wh whatever. You can treat it however you want. It's all gonna be the same. No, it's not. There's a lot that you need to do to properly manage that soil and all the soil life that's in it. Well, we've got a couple of situations that popped up this year. And let's, let's just talk about this one new field of mine. I call it the blank slate because really there's nothing there to start with. Uh, so we've got to build everything almost from scratch. Now, there are a couple areas in the field that are poorly drained where we just flat didn't get any crop in. And you look at those areas and they're very similar to what a good chunk of our state and several other states had this year, flooding and no crop in certain areas. And when you've got that, all of a sudden, all the things that are living in your soil, they don't have anything to feed off of. They don't have a crop growing out there. They don't have roots growing. And they and, don't have oxygen. And it's just a huge problem for them. So in those parts of the fields or, you know, or whole fields, that's a big concern. The other one is just no organic matter in my field. You know, even if you have a crop growing out there, if there is no organic matter, no plant material from previous years that's at various stages of breaking down in your soil, that's where soil life lives. That's where these little microbes hang out. They need organic matter. And in many of our soils across the United States, our organic matter levels are plummeting. And we need to focus on that rather than just on how do we get the best crop? How do we get the best crop? But we also want to build our soils up at the same time. So I want to jump back to something Darren said initially there with the flooding problems. It's not flooding as much as it is just excess moisture that's sitting there in the soil. Because you got to understand with a good healthy soil, it will have about 50% dirt, about 25% oxygen, and about 25% water. Well, when you get excess water, that means that you have less oxygen in the soil and literally the soil life dies. So in order to solve this problem, what farmers are doing all across the country is installing drain tile to basically lower the water table down to let's say two, three, maybe even four feet down in the soil. So it gives the soil life plenty of oxygen so they can keep living and doing well. Now the other thing with Darren's field when you talk about drainage overall is he's actually had a little too much drainage over the years. There was a lot of erosion that occurred especially from rainfall taking dirt from the hilltops bringing that dirt down into the valleys and literally on the hilltops the, they're down to the subsoil now. Well, when you're down to subsoil, it has very low organic matter levels. It's just not the type of soil that soil life, things like worms, bacteria, fungi, it's not where they love to live. Because for example, in some of his hilltops, it's 8.4 for a soil pH. The ideal soil pH for most crops is 6.8. That's also the ideal soil pH for most fungal life, for most bacterial life in the soil. They don't like 8.4 pH. They don't like 5.0 pH. You want to have a more neutral pH, that's good for soil life. One of the indicators that I use looking at different fields to see where we're at with this whole soil life issue is how fast is our residue breaking down? If we've got residue that's out there from three years ago, I know we've got a problem. We don't have many worms. We don't have uh, the right bacteria going in our fields because residue should be breaking down each year. And it's neat when you see some of the high yielding producers around the country when they've got corn stalks out there just heavy from 250 plus bushel corn and by the end of the next summer there is none of those corn stalks left. And you say, wow, where did all the corn stalks go? Because you're not doing heavy tillage. And you ask those guys, they say, well, just go out there and look. You'll see worms. 
just coming up and grabbing stocks and pulling them down, you know, little bits at a time. It was neat a few years back, uh, well, it's almost been eight years ago now, I was on Francis Child's farm in eastern Iowa, and he dug some root pits, and you can actually follow those wormholes going down, and he would see little bits of corn plant residue as those worms were pulling them down and breaking that residue down. So it's something over time in your fields. If you're having trouble with residue breakdown, focus on this issue. Say, how can I get that soil life going? Do I have a pH issue? Do I have you know problems with my organic matter or my drainage? What can I do to get some oxygen in my soil to help these bacteria, fungi, microbes, help them do their job? Because they're out there working for you 24-7. So a couple of things that farmers will do in addition to improving drainage and making sure that there's oxygen in the soil, they'll add a little manure to the ground because that brings bacteria, it brings fungi, and a lot of that is beneficial. And I know when you start thinking about bacteria and fungi, you say, oh, that stuff's bad. But no, there's actually a lot of bacteria and fungi that they do a tremendous amount of good things to the soil. Additionally, farmers want to try to reduce compaction in the soil. They would prefer to raise high residue crops, things like corn and wheat, so they can get more overall organic matter over time built into the soil. And finally, reducing tillage so they don't destroy that organic matter, they try to build it as time goes on. Now farmers don't really have a great big bag of bacteria and fungi that they're going to go spread across the field, but they will also look at biological products that can help things. Like for example, a product like Quikrits. It's a beneficial bacteria and a beneficial fungi that you can put right on your seed. So you develop those bacteria and fungi that are going to help the plant and they'll follow the roots as the plant grows. There are other things like rhizobia bacteria that can help with soybean nodulation. There are just many different things out there. We know a few of these species and can specifically address them, but for the most part, it's an overall picture with our whole soil, how can we develop our soil life? Well, once again, soil life is very important if you want to raise a good crop. So farmers are really starting to address this now. Rather than just thinking about soil as dirt, it's a lot more. And if you can do well with all these other things that you don't necessarily even see, then you raise a tremendous amount more crop and have more net profit on your farm. Well, one thing that will definitely result in more net profit is if you can control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 